All right, here's our first example involving, it's a word problem involving acceleration. It says that Jeremy accelerates uniformly from rest, meaning he's, he starts with zero velocity, from rest to 34 meters per second over 12 seconds. Then let's determine his acceleration and displacement. It is a fairly simple question as far as these things go. Remember you have a bank of equations that uh, I'll write over here. Here is this equation where the velocity at, at, at time t is equal to the acceleration times that time plus the initial velocity. You have a couple of equations regarding displacement. One of them is one half initial velocity plus final velocity times t. Again, when I say final velocity, it's the velocity at time t. That velocity always corresponds to that time period. Same thing here. Um, these are all only good for uniform acceleration. Um, there we go. They're only good when the, when the acceleration is constant. Otherwise, they're completely invalid. This v sub 0 is the velocity at 0 seconds. That's how you read that. Some textbooks you'll see that as a v sub i for initial velocity. Sometimes that's just v. Sometimes that's a v sub f for final velocity. The, uh, it, there's no standard there. Another equation that has its uses is dis displacement, all right, changing position delta x, same one, equals initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. And then the last one is uh, v squared equals v sub zero squared plus two a delta x. Again, these are your kinematic equations for uniform acceleration. Kinematics meaning the study of motion, and you describe motion, the relationship between velocity acceleration time and position when the acceleration is constant. Why are there four of them? Uh, they're all related. It just depends on what you know and what you're looking for. Uh, I'm going to go through this question and uh, point some things out. This question is more about format than answer. I'm more interested in the format than I am in the answer. I am more interested in the format of how you solve it than I am in the actual answer. I am more interested in the format, how you go about solving it and organizing your work than I am whether or not you got the right answer. Keep that in mind. So. Jeremy accelerates uniformly from rest. Write down your givens. And I want you to get organized. Some of you are naturally organized. Many of you are not. Force yourself. Force yourself to do this, all right? Again, if you're just sitting there trying to get the homework done and you're just putting numbers in and you calculate, go on to the next one, you're not doing yourself any favors, all right? You're wasting your time, all right? So the initial velocity is rest. So v sub 0 is 0 meters per second. It doesn't have to be. When the stopwatch starts, the timer starts, the thing could already be moving, but in this case, it's not. Um, so it's uniformly. So because it's uniform acceleration, we can use these equations. From rest to 34 meters per second. So v is 34 meters per second. At what point in time does it reach 34 meters per second? It reaches 34 meters per second at t equal to 12 seconds. Okay, so at 12 seconds, that's how fast it's going. Then for part A, we're looking for the acceleration. Once you have done this, once you have, have identified your givens and you've identified your unknown, here's your bank of equations. It's really just a question of matching those variables to whichever one fits. And again, this is a fairly simple equation as far as these things go. You know v sub 0, you know v, you know t, you're looking for a. Write down the raw equation. Write down the raw equation. Write down the raw equation without any additional numbers in it. And then you can put numbers in and solve. Some of you will, will prefer to put in the numbers and then solve it. Uh, 
more often than not, at more advanced levels of science, we require you to solve for the variable first and then put in the numbers. It doesn't really matter that much, but that is the preferred method. Uh, at the moment, I'm just going to put in the numbers and then solve. So the velocity at time t is 34, so that's v. I'm looking for a. Notice I'm not putting the units next to the numbers in the equation. If you look at this in a, a textbook or online, frequently they'll put the units in as they solve it. I, I find that cumbersome. Uh, anyhow, this is times 12 plus 0. I solve for acceleration, which would be 34 minus 0 all over 12. That comes out to be, I just did this a moment ago, it comes out to be uh, 2.83. Um, to two significant digits, it's 2.8 meters per second squared. Do not forget your units. You must put the units in there in order to um, dress up the number, because at 2.8 what? Meters per second squared. All right. So that's the answer to part A. To, to find part B, the displacement. Yeah, displacement, that's delta x. Well, you have a bunch of different equations for displacement. If you have displacement right here, right here, right here, you know by definition displacement is x minus x sub 0. Well, that doesn't help because we don't know x and x sub 0. You know that displacement is average velocity times time, um, actually times delta t. That doesn't help. We don't know the average velocity. I mean. There are all sorts of different equations. The easiest one to use, you can use this one because you know the initial velocity, the time, the acceleration. You can use this one because you know the final velocity, the initial velocity, the acceleration. This one, of course, is useless because it doesn't have displacement in it. I like this equation just because it's so simple. Okay, and that's, that's the one I'm going to use. Write down the raw equation. Now, I could have used, I'm going to use that one. I could have used that one. I could have used that one and solved for delta x. And I should get the same answer whichever way I do it. If I don't, then I made a mistake somewhere, all right? Because it's the same displacement whichever way I solve it. So this is going to be 1 half. I'm going to write down the raw equation. 1 half, 0 plus 34 times 12. And it, I got 204 meters. Again, don't forget the units. Okay, so that's how we do these questions. Write down your givens. Write down, I just lost a point. Write down what you're looking for. Acceleration, displacement. Match your variables, givens and unknowns, to your equations that you have, your bank of equations. Write down the equation you're going to use put in the numbers, and then come up with the answers, and don't forget to put in the units, all right? Again, I am more interested in the process than the answer. I'm interested in the answer, but I'm more interested in the process that you go through, the format to get to that answer, and don't forget the units, okay? All right.